Aloha and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii on uh, Thursday, August the 11th, uh, 20, uh, excuse me, August the 12th, 2021. You're watching Think Tech's show, America Finding Its Way. I'm your host today and uh, I'm Stephanie Stoll Dalton. Our show topic today is to review proceedings of the House Select Committee investigation into the January 6th attack on the Capitol, otherwise known as the insurrection. The committee chair, Benny Thompson, has the level, says he has the level of power he needs and is backed up by the Speaker Pelosi. And he says he has absolutely no reluctance to issue any subpoenas. Of course, we're still waiting to hear what those subpoenas are. But I don't think uh, we should be that hard on him. It is just the third week. He's had an assist lately from the DOJ or the whole procedure has had an assist from the DOJ for disallowing officials from using executive privilege uh, to testify when he does send out those uh, subpoenas. Very risky business to find out what the next line of defense is, of course, in that situation. But this week for the committee, there, there are several public announcements, news from the committee, but no meeting occurred. Actually, we haven't had a meeting since the first meeting, as far as I know, although there may be something going on, surely it's going on behind the curtains. However, the news and opinions about the committee membership charge, the, its charge and its scope uh, continue um, in, the, in the news as you're, you're probably reading. So to uh, continue the discussion here on Think Tech, we have assembled several informed Think Tech guests today to comment on the developments and the uh, promises and the challenges of the committee, which, which is to get the facts from ignition of this event um, at the Capitol to the last minute of the January insurrection. So I wanna welcome our panel of Jay Fidel and uh, Tim Apicello. So welcome to this, this uh, show um, on this panel. So I, ha I have a question about how the 1-6 committee news for this week um, and the announcement of the two new members. I, uh, I, these were, were touted and praised and approved by the speaker, Nancy Pelosi. And they include um, another Republican, which is of course the former Virginia Republican Congressman, um, Denver Riggleman um, as a senior uh, staff member on the committee. And also the second person that has been approved on the, or placed on the committee is uh, a, a civil servant named Joe, Joe Ma, Ma, Mayer, who's principal deputy general counsel at the Department of Homeland Security. And he was recommended by Liz Cheney. So, and he, what he, and he has joined the committee. So as, as you may uh, know, there are some issues with these two, but first of all, um, this adds what one and a half more Republicans to the committee. And is, is this a good thing, Jay? Hmm. I don't increasing... know, depends on how Republican they are. If they're in lockstep with the other Republicans, it's gonna be a problem. Uh, you know, you said that, um, you know, it's been going on for three weeks and we have my recollection and uh, you guys can add more, but uh, so, so they had uh, this public meeting with the uh, four uh, uh, policemen from the, the Capitol Police. Actually, one was from the DC police, I think. Um, and that was, um, you know, raw meat kind of hearing, very emotional and whatnot. And that was like three weeks ago. And then more recently, and I think it was over the weekend at a closed session, uh, they had this uh, revelationary stuff about Jeff Rosen and, uh, and uh, Jeffrey Clark in the DOJ, which suggested that um, you know, Trump, Trump was uh, trying to do in all ways possible a coup uh, on the election. Um, and that was interesting. Uh, and we only heard from 
uh, people who were there. Blumenthal came public on it, but there were others who, who spoke under mm, anonymity um, to, to, to talk about the evidence that was adduced in that uh, over the weekend hearing. But I, I, don't, I think that's pretty much all we know about it. And, um, you know, if you ask me whether it's moving fast enough, I, the, the answer has to be no. It's not moving fast enough. It's getting caught up. There are other distractions going on. It's losing its primacy on the front page. Uh, after a while, people are going to say, I don't care anymore. Um, you know, if we're looking to make the, the wrong right, if we're looking to find responsibility, um, we're, we're not doing it fast enough. This should be moving at breakneck speed, and it's simply not. And soon enough, we'll, we'll be in, um, you know, the, the summer doldrums here. And soon enough, we'll be in the fall. Uh, other things will happen. We have other fish to fry. Um, and this, this, this committee is going to fall by the wayside. And well, the report won't come out for a long time. So, I mean, they're playing to the press, obviously, on, on two uh, significant developments in the committee. But we need so much more than that. It's going to run out of steam. Well, I think that uh, you're right on point here because um, in addition to the issue you, you bring up, which is that we're not seeing them meeting and we're not seeing their progress and their activity, um, the speaker, um, Pelosi, uh, gave an approval uh, for an expanded timeline for the committee to do um, all that it takes to, to get the facts about what happened minute by minute. She actually dismissed concerns uh, that, that were made very plain for whatever political backlash will surge um, if this committee drags out and uh, loses its momentum. So um, it's, it, it's a question as to, and she backed out and dismissed and didn't deal with that. So what do you think uh, that that's gonna portend for what's coming up, Tim? because it's likely well i i share jay's concern about it protracted you know the attention span of the society is so so much been uh truncated and and shortened i mean we have the attention span of a gnat to keep our interest and once our interest goes away and wanes wanes down then you know whatever they're investigating becomes insufficient and uh let's move on to the next big story and that's true with the media that's true with almost everything we we encounter now it's just we move too fast and nothing holds our attention. I differ from Jay, from a, my opinion is that, and I'll use a sports baseball analogy is that, you know, you're in the first inning and your second to bat hits a home run. And who is the home run batter? Well, that's Jeffrey Rosen and seven hour testimony that really shined a light on, on the relentless influence of Donald Trump to the Department of Justice. And if that doesn't really speak in volumes of his participation to undermine this election, in addition to his conversations, recorded conversations to the Secretary of State of Georgia about looking for 11,780 votes, in addition to all the other machinations of Donald Trump to spur the, the January 6th uh, invasion and insurrection. Uh, so you put all the pieces of the puzzle, puzzle together and the picture is starting to look pretty good of Donald Trump's involvement of overtly trying to undermine the, the election. And I think Jeff, Jeffrey Rosen's testimony was a big part of that. And we'll find out more. And yeah, Jay, you're right. It, it will take more time. Uh, but right now you've got a pretty good a stool, a three-legged stool on this. And uh, the facts are starting to emerge. And I think that will hold the attention of the American public, um, even though now it's gonna take a little bit more time to get more, more, more information. Well, that was to the Judiciary Committee. So those are the, they, that's where the seven hour testimony went. And of course the, the concern, Jay, um, comment on this is that he said nothing. This was all going on, you know, months and months ago. Um, this, this was one of the last gasps. I mean, not one of the last, but one, one of the final efforts of the past president to be nonviolent about overturning the government and weaponizing this DOJ to represent his best interests, which would be to return over the election. So why is it that it took Rosen so long to get 
his man his man up to do his duty. Well, I mean, there's a number of questions that that drop out of that. <clears throat> Why was it the Judiciary Committee and not the and not the uh, Select Committee? <laughs> it's just strange that we have now parallel investigations going on within the House itself, you know, and then we have um, you know this this strange phenomenon of the. In, in, Inspector General of the Department of Justice. He has a, an investigation going on, um, presumably for a while. We haven't heard anything about that. Um, and uh, I, I don't know that the Inspector General is supposed to be independent you know, within the department. Why isn't the department doing its own investigation? What is wrong with Merrick Garland that he is, you know, let this fall on, a, is, is he looking public, political cover? Cover against what? Um, he should be cleaning house. We're not sure that he has cleaned house. And it's been eight months. You know, there's something something wrong with that. <laughs> and finally, let me point out that although it's revelationary that we find out about Rosen and uh, Clark, um, you know, what about how this insurrection got started? This is an examination in the House Select Committee into the insurrection. Um, sure, it's relevant what Trump was doing, you know, the days and weeks before and how he was trying to do a coup. OK, that, a coup, that, that's OK. That's interesting. But what about the insurrection itself? Um, they should be looking into how it came together. They should be looking into the strange machinations of the Republican Party and a number of Republican uh, legislators who, I mean, I believe in my heart, were directly involved in the insurrection. Um, we haven't heard about that. And I, and I think, you know, essentially, if, if you subtract, and you're right to do that, Stephanie, if you subtract the affair with Rosen and Clark, which is late, way late, those guys didn't, Rosen did not reveal this for eight months. We never heard from him. Um, it, that means that the, the Judiciary Committee investigation, which going on at the same time as the Select Committee investigation, um, you know, is is like eclipsing the select committee, which is only has had, as you pointed out, one hearing. And that was weeks and weeks ago. We need to get to the bottom of how this started. And you know, the truth of it is, and I, you know, I, I firmly believe this as a former investigator, a federal investigator, I, I firmly believe that the more time that goes by, it's not rocket science, the less you know, access you have to probative evidence. So I don't know what they're doing or what their staff is doing or what their new members are doing. Um, and and I'm, not, I'm not made more confident by the silence. I wanna see them move along. Before you know it, it'll be the end of the year. We won't have a report, as I said before, and it will pass off the radar. And you know what? This, is, this discussion here among the, the three of us also suggests to me that this committee will make itself irrelevant by the delay. The Senate Judiciary Committee will be more relevant. Um, it's like the a, Inspector a General will be more relevant. Yeah. Um, the newspaper maybe will be more relevant. <laughs> they really covered that thing with Rosen and Clark very well. Um, a number of newspapers around the country, including newspapers, really strident articles appeared in the Georgia newspapers. Um, so, you know, what I'm saying is this committee has got to work to make itself relevant and interesting and probative and give us a result before it's old hat. Yeah. So, well, let, let's just talk about this timeline then, um, because one, one thing I heard um, on um, cable news uh, was a discussion about what had seemed weird to me or uh, interesting to me um, was during the presidential debates, the last debate, if you recall that they came, uh, Biden and Trump got into a, a pretty close discussion and Biden challenged him to talk and give some guidance to all these uh, supporters of his. And, and he said, yes, yes, I'll do that. And so um, he did it and he said to the Proud Boys, do you recall what he said, Tim, to the Proud Boys? What did he say? And what do you what did stand, you think it meant? Stand back, stand ready, something like that. Um, basically, it was, it was it was it was it was it was, it was a message to them that be prepared, be prepared to act. 
Exactly. And uh, to me, exactly, because what he was supposed to be doing, and in my interpretation of it, see if you agree, was to, <laughs> to disperse, disperse, yeah. disperse. Wasn't that, did you feel like that was what he was asked to do it, by the moderator and by Biden? Yeah. He was yeah. a joke. No, he, he basically put up Beck. He actually, by mentioning him by name, um, gave them more energy and synergy to be prepared to do what they eventually did. And that was, uh, you know, the capital invasion. So, yeah, he charged them up by just mentioning them in, in the debate. So that seems a long time ago, right? The presidential debates, but I, I that just rings a bell as the uh, inciting incident, sort of. Okay, and then as you, you well, know let's that, let's go know, back. Let's go back three years ago. Out. Right, he was doing dog whistles from the very. Yeah, beginning. let's go about. They're good people on both sides. I mean, that was the real one. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, um, oh, so the so all of uh, this, um discussion then you know then it moved so if we look at that as the dog whistle certainly but kind of like getting everybody ready for what the you know wiley trump expects to happen and then too bad it did for him it made him do all these things but as his what was his strategy going along as you look at the events the levers the the tactics he used um after uh, and that he was prepared to use by the time of the election and then uh losing the election um and including what jay and you were talking about with um uh, rosen um he did all of these non-violent but politically coercive and destructive things but all of them non-violent until he got to the end in his last option was then to go violent do you see that tim you're you're shaking your head no i i think he set the stage for violence again remember he was talking about who his supporters were the bikers and they're a mean bunch a tough bunch um he was slowly lighting the fuse for violence and he was preparing them with a wink and a nod and we could call it a dog whistle some people say it was a bullhorn um i think it was somewhere in between but by giving a wink and a nod to his tough bikers and you know all these uh, loyal supporters of trump um, he was preparing them and they were taking the, the bait and they were taking the hint and they became more prepared for violence and they're planning for, for some event that they weren't quite sure what it would be yet. But remember, that was years ago that he was using the, those kind, that kind of language to, to incite them. So, so um, there's argument or, or opining out there in the, in the news that that is why the scope of the one six commission should be extended across the the biggest landscape, because all of this is important to know from its outset in uh, years ago things that were going and that all of this is under the scope of the the committee. What do you think, Jay? Is that too far reach, or what do you think? Oh, well, I think Nancy Pelosi ought to coordinate this instead of having multiple investigations going on. Each one of them loses steam by having other competing inve investigations. So I, you know, I would support that. They should find out, you know, all the communications that were going on. It's not just the dog whistle things either. It's, um, you know, the instructions he gave to uh, Rosen and Clark uh, and the uh, PAC, the Attorney General I'm sorry, the US attorney in Georgia, Northern Georgia, all these you know, affirmative things he was doing. And I think if you connect the dots on all those affirmative things, as Tim says, he's setting up an insurrection. Um, and I don't think we know half of it yet though. Yeah. <clears throat> I think he must have been, it was not just that he's uh, reading the, uh, the Twitter feed on the Oath, the Oath Keepers, he was probably talking to them or having proxies talk to them um, I'm sure that when you get down to it, Trump was directly involved or either directly or through close, close proxies in motivating these people and helping them organize and, and pay the freight of getting buses to come to Washington, of um, you know, setting the standards for what they were going to do in Washington. So I mean, that's, that's what we have to find out. And if, if expanding the, uh, the, the role of the committee, which I think you know that's the committee's job to do that. They they really have an open an open channel on this. 
um, then fine, let's find out what Trump was saying, doing, communicating all through that period. But I want to know about the Republican legislators. I want to know about their connections with the Oath Keepers and all those groups. I want to know about, um, you know, policemen, firemen, um, lawyers, uh -huh. um, you know, everybody who was involved, who had a government role. I'm sure there were active military there. I want to know about that. And, you know, don't forget that the FBI is also doing its investigation by investigating now 570 people they arrested and many more, I'm sure, that they are learning about from the ones they arrested. So what's the story there? And how is that feeding back to Merrick Garland? How is it feeding back to the congressional committees, both of them, uh, that are investigating this? Um, we need to know. And, and if, if you tell me, guys, that the FBI is all secret about this and what they are learning from their 570 plus arrestees, um, and they're not sharing that with the committee, I will be very, very disappointed in them and in the Department of Justice. Yeah. Well, I wanted to uh, mention that I've read um, other analogies uh, about what has happened to like the sowing, um, so the seeds have been sown for these, this insurrection and anarchy. And that the, it is as bad um, as, well, it's domestic terrorism. It's being labeled as domestic terrorism and the seeds have been sown for that. And so, um, and also compared, compared actually to ISIS and the way ISIS operates, although there was a, a um, discussion with the Sinn Féin group in, in the Northern Ireland, they say maybe it's actually more like that. But, but Tim, how does that strike you to have that kind of domestic terrorism described as, as boiling, thriving here in our US? Well, I think that's why Think Tech has had your, has your show, my show, and we've been talking about for three years is the alarm bells of breaching our democracy and the institutions that hold our democracy together was evident the day Donald Trump took the oath of office. And I think we all kind of took note of it and committed to do what we could and say what we can say um, to do our part, our small part on, on, on this very thing that we have a domestic insurrection. And it, it didn't start on January 6th by no means. It really started on the day Donald Trump took office because he was undermining our institutions. And, um, that will continue if, if we allow it. So that is the, the, you know, that is the importance of this steering uh, committee and its report is a signpost for the future as a deterrent to keep the Donald Trumps of the future out of this sort of thing. I would just mention one other thing is that we don't, that steering committee does not want, or select committee does not want to go in the path of the Mueller investigation and subsequent um, first impeachment. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll use the analogy that attorneys make when they do a, a week long worth of discovery, but what wins the day is maybe 20 minutes of direct testimony. Um, you can get so much evidence that it gets lost in the minutia and it gets lost in the details and you've lost the big picture. So a good attorney knows how to take a mountain of evidence and pare it down to what is really effective and is going to win the day, uh, not only for the, you know, any potential criminal filings, but for the public to understand and for them to get it, to synthesize a mountain of information and make sure it's not a mountain of information. Yeah, let me add two things out of what Tim said. Number one yeah. is uh, we've got to prevent this from happening again. And that is a primary purpose of, of any investigation here because the roots of it are still there and they have to be pulled out or it will happen again. We keep hearing from oh, the no. FBI, no less, that you know there are all these noises underfoot about that it will be happening again. Your your question, you know, implies and states that Stephanie, yeah, <clears> that there is there's something either. going on here where people yeah. are planning to do it again, and this and committee is key to stopping it from doing it again. Uh, let me and, and let me uh, add one other point that came out of what Tim said. <clears throat> you know, we keep hearing about subpoenas, and I totally agree. It's like just an have iceberg. Yes, uh, Jay. Actually, we. I was going to go to these questions that just came in about the subpoena. Can I do that with you, please? Well, let me just finish my point. Oh, okay. um, the, the um, you know, the, the subpoenas um, have been mentioned. 
uh, always in the future tense. Uh, yes. If the subpoenas involved high profile organizations or people, we would have heard about them. We have not heard about them. The committee has not indicated that it has actually issued the first subpoena yet. I don't know what's holding them up. Tim's point is very good uh, in the sense that, um, you know, it's like an iceberg. Seven eighths of it are documents under the surface and only one eighth of it is, is people appearing. Uh, <clears throat> so far, the seven eighths haven't been handled as far as we know. This is troubling. They're moving too slowly, sorry. Well, what effect do you think, this is a viewer's question, what effect do you think um, no executive privilege will have on the subpoenas? I don't think That's it's executive effect. privilege here. I think there's been a ruling to that effect. Well, it says- Which, we, which, we, you know, which means those guys will have to appear and they'll have to talk about what happened. This is not privileged. But they can take the Fifth Amendment, right? They can yes. protect them. They can take the Fifth Amendment. And, and, that so will, and that will be an extraordinary, extraordinary event for the country, for people mm -hmm. who, have, who are not talking about privilege uh, or, um, well, not Let talking about privilege to take the Fifth Amendment. I'd like to jump well, in on that point because in the past, during the Mueller investigation, subpoenas were issued and they just said, well, I'm not going to appear because I'll just evoke my Fifth Amendment right. And for whatever reason, that was acceptable. And, and in my mind, no, you have the right to evoke your Fifth Amendment rights, but you're going to do so in front of the cameras, in front of Congress, and in front of the committee. And so you don't just get to sit back in your office and go, I'm not showing up. No, you, as I said a couple of weeks ago, you put your acoli in that seat in front of Congress, and then you evoke your Fifth Amendment, and then everyone gets to see you do that. And then they get to ask, why is he doing that? Yeah. So that, now that's remember, a remember, it, once you evoke your Fifth Amendment, you can be offered immunity on possible charges, and then you have to testify, even though you evoke the Fifth Amendment. And Good that point. should happen with some of these people anyway. Okay, but with about a minute left, there's a second question uh, for both of you. We'll start um, with Jay and and finish with Tim. But who do you think? they should subpoena please be specific from the well, there's two general areas one is everybody in the white house around trump who might have been involved in this uh, the second area would be um you know people in the department of justice we already know a bunch of them um and uh, they've testified already i'm not sure but there are others who could have should have would have who knew about it, who can give us information, even staffers, you know. But those are the two general areas. I, I can't think of a, any other area, but other areas would be identified once you get into the primary areas. So Tim, what, what do you have to say about that question or on subpoenas? Well, depending on the area, how about Donald Trump? <laughs> Let's bring him in. <laughs> exactly. And, and how exactly. about members of Congress? How about yeah. members and of the, Congress? I want members. And how about I, all those Oath Keeper guys who were there? Yeah. I'd like the committee yeah. to take a whack at them. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Jay. I want, I want members of Congress in front of their, I want their acolytes in the chairs as well. And if they want to invoke the fifth, more power to them. But gosh darn it, uh, they got a story to tell. Some of them do. I, yeah. I could think of uh, a few of them right now. Hey, and, and the, the, this committee cannot let them blow off subpoenas. If they, about if the they don't want to come down, they'll let them let the let the marshal bring them down. Yeah. Correct. The brass in the Pentagon, how about those those folks? The generals and admirals. There's sure. We need to know what happened. Yeah. And you know, okay. there were there's strange plays going on in the afternoon of January 6th. Uh, we need to know every single thing that happened. The press didn't get it all yet. We need to get it yeah. all. No, and, and uh, that's the intent. They've stated that mission, so we want to watch and see that they get there. Well, it's aloha time for us, and uh, we'll need to wrap up. So thanks to Tim Apicello and to Jay Fidel for this critical conversation, which is very interesting. So um, I'm Stephanie Stoll Dalton, hosting for America Finding Its Way. We'll see you next week, same day, same time, and mahalo for your participation. Thank you, everyone.